The XLOOKUP is arguably the most powerful function in Excel, but there's actually a better alternative for certain scenarios that I'm about to show you. In this data over here, we have two tables and we want to find out the corresponding sales for each of these people. So essentially, we want to do a lookup that matches the person's name here with the person's name on this other table. For that, we can just use an XLOOKUP. Hit the tab key there, the lookup value is we're looking for Chris Robbins, comma, and we're looking for that person within this list over here, comma, such that as the return, we get returned the sales. We can then just close up parenthesis and hit enter. It's really that simple with an XLOOKUP to find the corresponding sales. And if you want to download this same Excel file to follow along, head over to a link in the description below to download it for free. That's a fairly simple scenario that the XLOOKUP handles very well, but what happens in one like this, where you can see the person's name isn't exactly the same, it's Chris on this side, and it's Chris Robbins on this other side. Same thing with Michael W, it's Michael Wong over on this side. So can the XLOOKUP still do it? And the answer is yes, but making a small modification. So it's XLOOKUP, we're looking for Chris, but that's not quite going to match because this person's name is Chris Robbins, so we need to add an ampersand and in quotations an asterisk. What this does is it's telling Excel that hey ignore whatever is after Chris, let's just make sure that the Chris here is matching the Chris on this side. If so we will consider that an approximate match and so we want to get the return. Comma, the lookup array is where can we find Chris, we can find him in the list of person, comma, and then we can find the corresponding sales. We can then hit a comma again one more time and under the match mode what we want is an approximate match which is the wildcard character match type a 2 there close up parenthesis and hit enter and you can see that this still works correctly unfortunately that's no longer the case in this next scenario i'm about to show you over here you can see that we have the same data with the person and the sales and the person and the age that we would like to find the sales over here to the side column the problem is the names are now very different so it's Christopher Robbins for Chris Robbins, it's Johns with an S for John Lee, and so there's a lot of typos and differences, even here with Jane Alexa is now Jane with two N's, and it's Alexis as a surname, so the X lookup isn't quite going to work. That's where the fuzzy lookup comes handy, so let me show you why it's a better alternative to the X lookup in this scenario. To activate it, we first need to have both datasets here as tables, so press Ctrl T if you haven't already, then go over to data and click on from table slash range. Once you do that, it's going to upload the sales table and we just want to click on close and load so we can upload a second table as well. This should open up a new sheet like so, but let's ignore that for now, go back to the previous sheet and also upload this second table by going to data again and clicking on from table slash range. Now you should see on the left hand side we have both tables, one for the sales and one for the age. We're now using the Power Query Editor but there's also an alternative method inside of Excel that I'm going to show you next. For the time being we just want to go over to merge queries. In this pop up here it's going to say select a table and matching columns to create a merge table. So the idea is that we want to select both the age table and the sales table and what do we have in common? Well we have this person's area that we have in common but that said it's not very similar. That's why on the bottom it says that we have 0 out of 7 rows that are matching. That's where this really small thing over here called use fuzzy matching to perform the merge comes handy. Under the fuzzy matching options once we tick that we want to go to the similarity threshold. So if we look over here in the info area, it basically goes all the way to 1, meaning that it's a perfect match. In our case, we don't have perfect matches. Let's try for 0.8. You'll see that it's matching 1 out of 7 rows. If we switch that to 0.5, let's say, you can see it's now 7 out of 7 rows. So that's looking good. Let's go ahead and click on OK to see what happens. Now we have within this age table the sales area to the right. We just want to expand that by clicking on this button here and click on OK. Let me then move this over to the left to compare the names. So you can see Christopher is now Chris. That's all matching correctly. Same thing with John's that had a typo on the S. And even this Jane with two N's and Alexis versus Jane Alexa with one N. 
it's all working correctly and to get it back inside of Excel we just want to click on close and load. So here we have the merged table, we can delete certain columns if we want to and overall we're able to do much more powerful matching than with the XLOOKUP function. If you would ideally just like to stay inside of Excel instead of have to go to Power Query, here's how you can do it such that you get a new tab called Fuzzy Lookup as you can see right here and I can perform the same action inside of Excel. I'm going to show you how to add this next but first if you're liking our teaching style and you want to learn in-demand data skills you can consider checking out our data analyst program. The program consists of four individual courses and over 300 lessons. First, in Excel, you learn best practices for formatting, formulas, and charts. Then, you'll apply your skills in real-life case studies from data cleaning to building a dynamic financial model. Next, in Power BI, you'll dive into data visualization and creating interactive dashboards to extract maximum insights from your data. Thirdly, in SQL, you'll work with larger databases, write SQL queries, and even connect databases with external applications like Excel and Power BI. Finally, in VBA and Macros, you'll learn to automate tasks like generating pivot tables, profit and loss reports, and much more. So whether you're in or looking for a career as a data analyst, business analyst, or financial analyst, join our data analyst program now using the link in the description below to thrive in today's data-driven world. So to install the fuzzy lookup as a separate tab, as you can see right here, I have it on mine. Here's what you need to do. First, you just want to go over to Google and look up fuzzy lookup add-in for Excel. Here, you want to select on the one by Microsoft. So just click on that and download it from here. It's completely free. There's no free trials or anything like that either. Once you do that, you'll get this pop-up and you just want to install it. In my case, it's already installed, so I don't have that option. Once you go through the steps, you just need to close Excel once and then open it again and you should see the fuzzy lookup over on the side. But let me show you how to use it here. We just want to click on that once and it's going to show us this pop-up on the left. We want to select the relevant tables. If you want to know your table's name, you can go under table design and it should be here on the left. You can change it if you like too. So I know that the left table for me is sales and the right one is the age. Based on that, it's selecting what I have in common. So you can see it's the header called persons. That's fine. We can then click on this button and you can see it's added it towards the bottom. We don't need this twice, so we can just close out of one of them. Then down below, we have the output columns, which are essentially the answers that we want to see. I can select on any cell to generate them and we're happy to see the person, the sales then the person and the age from the other column, and then the similarity score. For the number of matches, it basically means if we have more than one Christopher, should that be matching two? In this case, it's one to one, so that's fine. And the similarity threshold, let's keep that relatively low, as they are kind of different. Something like 0 0.2, 0 0.25 should work. Now I just need to click on go, and you can see here on the left hand side, it's generated this table. As you can see, it's matching all of the people here with the people in this other table with their respective sales and ages. I can delete this column as it's basically duplicated. And then we can see the similarity score. If you don't want to see that, you can just untick on it over here and generate that again. You might find this to be a better alternative to using Power Query, but I actually think Power Query is superior for one main reason. Let me show you what that is. Over here, if we go back to this table that had both columns merged and then just go under query and click on edit. Once this loads up, if we go to merge queries again to see what we did earlier, you'll notice that we had the age and the sales that we connected via the person here, but we completely ignored this part called the join kind. And we actually have a ton of different options within it. What this is saying is the left outer is it's going to take all of the values on the left column and find the matching values on the right column down below. The thing is, if there's any extra ones on the right, it's not going to show them. So we can customize that for the left side, the right side, and even the inner side, meaning that it's only going to show whatever is matching in both. An example of this being useful could be to see if people have paid in month one, and in month two. If that's the case, we could select the inner only and we would find those that have paid in both instead of just in month one or in month 
to to learn even more awesome data cleaning tricks check out this video over here or take our excel course over here hit the like and the subscribe and i'll catch you in the next one